Hi, I'm Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, and I'm back with my plans and pans for the week. Well, this has been an incredible week, so busy and so significant. So I'm going to run through a few of the things that have happened. The good news is we avoided a shutdown of the federal government. Um, we began by passing a continuing resolution to provide the funding through December uh, to December um, to make sure that there isn't a shutdown. This is the, something that uh, Mitch McConnell didn't seem to be concerned about in the in the United States Senate. But the bill that we passed went to the uh, president, and so we will be funded um, in time to make sure that uh, we don't have a, a shutdown once again. Interestingly enough, um, 36 Republicans voted with us. Um, I don't know if they're figuring out that uh, in order to govern, we can't have a shutdown, but whatever. Very happy that we had bipartisan support, uh, support for that. The House also um, passed a bill to make sure that we pay our bills. Um, and the idea is in the Constitution and it's required. But again, Mitch McConnell said that we're not going to um, raise the debt ceiling. Now understand that this is money already spent. And so we did the, uh, the, the, the proper thing um, to make sure that we are going to um, pay our bills. We're not gonna default on the faith and credit of the United States of America. And for Mitch McConnell to still be battling on, on that one really is legislative malpractice, unacceptable. So we're, we're still finding that, but at least the House has done its job. So we are now in the process of debating two big bills. I've probably mentioned them to you before, but I, wanna, I want you to understand that we are on a path right now. I'm feeling very optimistic and very pos positive, although, you know, they say that watching legislation get done um, is like, uh, you know, watching how you make sausage, not really uh, appetizing, but we're getting there. To pass one, a bipartisan infrastructure bill. All of our communities want better, better streets, we want more mass transportation, um, bridges that aren't gonna, aren't gonna fall down. Um, and, and so, yes, we want to pass that bill. You know, it's not a perfect bill. In fact, it doesn't decrease, it slightly in, it, it, it increases um, the uh, climate issues, um, more, um, uh, more emissions, actually, not less. So we have made, we, the Democrats in the House, by, in the majority, and also the um, Progressive Caucus has said, we have to pass two bills. One is that bipartisan infrastructure bill. Yes, we need to do that. But number two, we need to pass the Build Back Better Reconciliation Bill. That's the bill that will be passed just by Democrats, not just in the House, but in the Senate, where we will have 51 votes as long as Kamala Harris joins us. So this has been difficult. We know that Senator Joe Manchin, Senator Kirsten Sinema has been pushing, pushing back. But negotiations are happening and we need to make them happen as quickly as possible. You know, passage of this bill means that we will have childcare for our children and mean that families, particularly women, are gonna finally be able to go back to work we're gonna have long-term care because who takes care of the children and who takes care of the frail elderly? Mostly the women in this country. And we're gonna also pass home and community-based services, so important. We're gonna do some robust addressing of the climate crisis. Um, and that is very important in this Build Back Better legislation. Um, and, and so don't let anyone tell you, as some of the reporters did, I just had a kind of rant. They like to talk about how Democrats are in disarray. No, we are in a process led by Nancy, Nancy Pelosi and the President of the United States. This is his agenda that we have to get past. 
And, and so while the um, debate is, is going on, don't listen to all the naysayers who may be saying, oh, this is in trouble, that's in trouble, they're not gonna get it done. We are gonna get it done. I've been telling every, everybody, including the, the, the media, don't bet against Nancy Pelosi, who is the most effective um, Speaker of the House, I think, in the history of the United States, but also, and, and because, she is such a great negotiator. So that's, uh, that's what's going on um, legislatively right now. You know, I got a, um, a, a request from a constituent in the, in the district named Peter about what are we doing on Social Security. So first, I just wanna tell you, there is nothing on the table that is gonna hurt Social Security right now. The question is, what can we do to help it? So I am um, a co-sponsor of a bill that uh, John uh, Larson has, uh, Congressman John Larson. We came into the Congress together, both long-termers here, um, that would improve Social Security. Um, and so it increases benefits for everyone. It particularly then, in addition, um, targets people who are frontline workers, people who have been Social Security recipients for a long time, so the value of their benefit has, has gone down. The poorest people, we're, we're gonna see, make sure that Social Security doesn't leave people in poverty. Um, so we're, we're, we're doing um, uh, that. We also wanna raise the cost of living adjustment. I know people over the years have said, really, that's the COLA? Sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's 1%. We want to have a more robust um, COLA, cost of living adjustment. Um, at long last, um, we want to address people who are affected by the so-called windfall elimination. People, federal workers, um, teachers, who find that they are that their social security is diminished by the amount of money that they or even their spouses have earned. It's time for us to deal with this. We have introduced legislation every year dealing with the windfall elimination provision, and we want to do that in a, in a piece, in, in a bill. Um, and uh, we want to give caregiver credit to people who have primarily women who have, have had to leave the workforce to be um, caregivers and give them credit on their social security. That's just among the things that we want to do. So the prospects are not negative. In fact, they're positive going forward. Um, so it is Hispanic Heritage Month. And I, I just wanna make a few points about it. You know, um, it's not just about acknowledging all the contributions um, over the past few years of the um, Hispanic population, but to realize that um, our, that Hispanic heritage is American heritage. Um, from day one, that's been true in this, in this country. Big chunks of our country have been entirely Hispanic, and now about a third of the states in this country actually have Hispanic names. Colorado, Montana, Nevada, Florida, Texas, California, just to name a few, but also cities all over the country, in red states, in blue states. Uh, we're talking about Casa, Arkansas, and Amarillo, Texas, and Palo Alto, California, and Havana, Illinois. And I, I'm saying it in their, in, in our, the, the way we pronounce it in English, um, Valdez, Alaska, um, Valparaiso, Indiana, Buena Vista, Virginia, DeSoto, Kansas. Um, so you can't, you can hardly find a state in this country that doesn't reflect our Hispanic heritage. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we are dealing with issues of immigration, of often the disparate um, bad income of the COVID virus on Hispanic um, communities. So we have a lot to do to honor our Hispanic heritage in times right now, and I'm anxious to do that. I have a, a, a growing 
uh, a fairly prominent and growing Hispanic population in the 9th Congressional District, and we're excited about it. So, you know, we talk about as American as apple pie, but actually apples came from Europe. We really should be saying um, as American as pumpkin pie, because pumpkin came from the areas that were from Spain, Spanish speaking, our Hispanic heritage. So it's American as pumpkin pie. And, and now I want to talk to you about the coronavirus because I began my morning along with Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, and a lot of members of Congress at this art installation, which was of little white flags that represented each individual who has died from the COVID virus. And it's basically as far as the eye can see. Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer and our, our, our whip um, went up, the leadership of our caucus went up and adjusted the number of people who have died. Um, it's over 600 and well over 690 thousand people and tomorrow we're going to get to 700,000 plus people that number goes up every single day and it, it's so dramatic to look out on that field um, by the Washington Monument and see all of those flags the other thing that is really amazing is that there was a um, little circle of white flags that represented how many people in New Zealand have died. Tiny. And um, clearly, the United States of America, I'm not saying we would be as few as New Zealand, but proportionately, we would have probably hundreds of thousands of fewer deaths if we hadn't had the misinformation that we've had and the um, under the, the last president, um, and continuing now, by the way, on Facebook and other places online, um, and the um, anti, anti vaxxers who are telling lies to the American people. And so we, we do have a, a long way to, to go. Good news on the COVID front is that the pharmaceutical company Merck. Um, has asked for um, emergency authorization for a pill that deals with, um, it's, not a, it's, it's not a vaccine that would prevent it, but would, is a treatment that seems to be effective for the most serious cases. Now think about it, a pill. So it could avoid hospitalization. It means you don't have to have intravenous um, and really could be a boon. So on the treatment front, we are seeing some real potential um, uh, product that would prevent the loss of life. This is good news. Um, Illinois um, saw 3,344 new cases and 42 deaths yesterday. So we're still not, not there. Um, as of Wednesday, there were 1,840 people in the, uh, in the hospital in, in Illinois. So we need to continue that downward trend, work as hard, that we are working hard in the Congress to make sure that we are understand the transformative moment that we're in, that if we pass the Build Back Better Plan, American families, all American families, middle class families, people who aspire to the middle class, all races, religions, ethnicity are going to do better in the United States of America when we pass the bills that are going to put money in the uh, pockets of people that are gonna lower the cost of prescription drugs, make sure that everyone has access to affordable health care. Um, that we do deal with, uh, with, with climate and infrastructure, uh, even more in the uh, Build Back Better plan. We're gonna get it done. Don't believe the naysayers, we're working hard, we're gonna win, and when we fight, we win. Um, and let me say to my Spanish-speaking um, constituents, cuando luchamos, 
ganamos. When we fight, we win. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.